I will be comparing and contrasting the films North by Northwest and The Bourne Identity, looking at how the genre of spy thriller movies has developed over the past 50 years, as well as how each movie uses geographic context and reflects the political eras in which they were made. North by Northwest is a timeless spy thriller directed by Alfred Hitchcock in which the protagonist, Roger Thornhill, a successful advertising executive, has his identity mistaken for a U.S. government spy named Kaplan, who doesn't actually exist, and is forced to run away because the Russians are after him. While escaping on a train, he meets a woman named Eve Kendall, apparently by accident. As he gathers more clues, Thornhill travels across the U.S., gets shot at, survives a drunken car chase, gets arrested, escapes, meets CIA spy masters, and learns that Kaplan is a front and that the real undercover spy is Eve, who is working to expose a Russian spy ring. In the last thrilling scene, Thornhill and Eve make a daring escape, fleeing from the Russian bad guys down the face of Mount Rushmore. The Born Identity is a modern spy thriller directed by Doug Lehman, starring Matt Damon and Franco Potete. The opening scene shows us a man who is found at sea by an Italian fishing crew and hoisted onto their boat. He wakes up but has no clue where he is or who he is. He is full of bullet holes and a secret holographic message embedded under his skin. Along the journey of trying to figure out who he is, Bourne learns that he has a range of extraordinary talents in combat and linguistics. He escapes from U.S. Embassy guards with the help of a woman he meets in the alley, Marie Krauts. They drive from Switzerland to France while being pursued by assassins. They survive a car chase in Paris and more assassination attempts, gathering clues to Bourne's real identity along the way. The final showdown with U.S. government spy masters and assassins reveal his true identity, and then pushes him to try and reject his past as a government assassin. Both movies are classic spy thrillers that take their audiences on fast-paced adventures across multiple cities and countries. These movies share common plot devices of the spy thriller genre, mistaken identity, car chases, and assassination attempts. The approach to each is markedly different in each film and demonstrates how the genre itself has grown and changed over 50 years. Elements developed by Alfred Hitchcock in the 1950s influenced the whole generation of directors of spy thrillers from Bond to Mission Impossible to Bourne. One similar theme across North by Northwest and the Bourne identity is mistaken identity. Each protagonist searches for his identity through changing circumstances. Thornell knows who he is, but the rest of the world thinks he is a murderer and a spy named Kaplan. The scene is suspenseful, but not overly cliche. You answer his telephone, you live in his hotel room, and yet you are not Mr. Kaplan. <laughs> Nevertheless, we are pleased to find you in. Now wait. Fifty years later, mistaken identity takes on a new twist in The Born Identity. The protagonist has amnesia, so the audience knows more about him than he does. Suspense is built up around how Bourne will discover himself. Why does he possess amazing combat skills and spatial awareness? I can tell you the license plate numbers of all six cars outside. I can tell you that our waitress is left-handed and the guy sitting up at the counter weighs 215 pounds and knows how to handle himself. I know the best place to look for a gun is the cab of the gray truck outside. And at this altitude, I can run flat out for a half mile before my hands start shaking. Now, why would I know that? How can I know that and not know who I am? The second classic theme common to spy thrillers is the car chase. The car chase scene in North by Northwest was half thrilling chase, half comic device. Cary Grant hams it up as a drunk Thornhill. It's an assassination attempt which should be thrilling but ends up being comical. The special effects used to simulate a jerky ride and receding rear window scenery seem very hokey when compared to today's special effects, but were the height of special effects standards in 1959. In contrast, the car chase in The Born Identity is the ultimate thrill ride through the narrow streets of Paris. The chase is entertaining with short jerky camera angles, but it also serves as a way for the audience to understand Born's identity further. He is cool, calm, and collected, pulling out a map and calmly asking Marie if the car is in good condition before he snaps into action and drives like a maniac. In 2002, the shaky camera was new and the director had cameras mounted all over the car so that the audience could feel every bump and turn. A third common theme is assassination attempt. In an interview, Hitchcock talked about how he wanted to create an assassination attempt as far from predictable and cliche as possible so that the audience would have no idea what was coming. 
He said, I take the loneliest, emptiest spot I can so that there is no place to run to recover, no place to hide, and no place for the enemy to hide. If we can call him that, you see. This quote isn't just how Hitchcock thought about the scene, but about the whole film. He wanted to develop a spy thriller that was novel, unpredictable, and entertaining for the audience. Hitchcock and his cinematographer, Robert Burks, shot the scene with the wide camera angles on a bright sunny day and minimal dialogue. The faraway sound of an airplane builds up the suspense. Thornhill sees a crop duster flying overhead and thinks nothing of it until he realizes at the last second that it's coming straight for him. The camera shots make the audience feel like they're running away from the crop duster along with Thornhill. There are multiple assassination attempts made on Jason Bourne's life. The first attempt literally bursts into a quiet, low-key scene where Jason and Marie think they have found Jason's home. The audience gets a clue as the rising music gets tense. Bourne starts to hear noises and suspects that something is up. Suddenly, a man crashes through the window with a gun shooting in every direction. Bourne engages in hand-to-hand -hand combat with the assassin for several minutes, finally gaining the upper hand and forcing the assassin to jump out the window, committing suicide rather than having to reveal any secrets to Bourne. The scene is impressive not only for the speed of the action, but also for the tight image camera angles, the fast cuts, the rapid editing, and the shaky camera technique. All of these seem commonplace today in action movies. However, this style was new in 2002 when previous fight scenes had been filmed at a wide angle so the audience could see the whole scene at once. In addition to the camera angles and editing, the style of fighting played a key role in the film. In addition to common plot elements and cinematography, each film uses sound and music effectively to set the mood, building up suspense and anxiety, and foreshadowing events. In this scene, the music signals their anxiety and desperation to escape. The music also lets the audience know that this is the finale. In this scene, the music not only creates suspense, but also helps move the plot along, the tempo and rhythm signals to the audience that Bourne will escape. The last element to consider is the geopolitical context in which each film was made. North by Northwest was made in 1959 at the height of the Cold War between the US and the Soviet Union. Audiences at the time recognized the underlying battle with the Russian bad guys and Americans the need to keep the US secret safe as well as the underlying moral theme that espionage and pretending to be someone you aren't will end badly. U.S. spy masters are depicted as cold manipulators who are happy that an unsuspecting citizen has wandered into the role of the non-existent Kaplan. What are we going to do? Do? About Mr. Thornhill. We, uh, we do nothing. Nothing? That's right, nothing. Oh, we could congratulate ourselves on a marvelous stroke of good fortune. Our non-existent decoy, George Kaplan, created a diverse suspicion from our actual agent, has fortuitously become a live decoy. Yes, Professor. How long do you think he'll stay alive? Well, that's his problem. The geopolitical setting for the Bourne identity has moved a long way from the Cold War to the uncertain war against global terrorism, where it is harder to define the bad guys. As the audience learns more about Bourne's identity, they see the CIA depicted as bad guys fighting a dirty war, abusing the sanity of their own soldiers in the name of protecting U.S. interests. From various interviews, we know that director Doug Lehman was influenced by his father's expose of the Iran-Contra dirty war. Because I thought we were on the same side. Whose side is that? Boy, you don't know what you're doing, do you, Jason? You don't have a goddamn clue. Who am I? You're a U.S. government property. You're a malfunctioning $30 million weapon. By comparing and contrasting the films North by Northwest and The Bourne Identity, we have seen how the genre of spy thriller movies has developed over the past 50 years, as well as how each movie reflects the geopolitical eras in which they were made.